So continuing the review, uh, we review rational expressions from 0308 and 0310. And remember, this is just all about fractions and factoring and just putting those two guys together. So if you know how to factor, we're going to be in good shape here. So number one, we're trying to multiply. And whenever you reduce with multiplication, you have to have common factors. So the first thing I need to do is factor everything. So x squared plus 9x plus 8 factors as x plus 8, x plus 1. This denominator here is a trinomial, so I expect it to factor as two binomial factors. 2x squared breaks down as 2x and x. And in order to get a negative 1x in the middle, see we need to have a negative 3 here and a plus 1 here. Now before we go on, make sure that, the, make sure that this does check out. This is a negative 3x plus 2x, so that does give you a negative x. Times, so on the other side here, we factor this guy, and he will factor as 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. Remember, if at any point you need to pause the video and try to work this out on your own, I highly suggest that. And then come back and uh, make sure that your factorization matches up with mine. Uh, this denominator here is the difference of squares x plus 8 times x minus 8. So this is just an exercise in can you factor. All right, so now that we have this multiplication, we look for common factors to reduce. So the x plus 1s will reduce. You have an x plus 8 in the numerator and the denominator. And you also have a common factor of 2x minus 3. So when we reduce these, the only factors we have left are 2x minus 1 in the numerator and x minus 8 in the denominator. And that's all you can do. Please don't try to reduce the x's away because here the x's are not factors that are common to both the numerator and denominator. So we have to be very careful about that. In problem number two, this is a division problem. And remember that when you are dividing fractions, you have to multiply times the reciprocal. Now I'm going to do a couple of steps at one time. I'm going to go ahead and ta change this guy to multiplication. I'm also going to take out common factors that I see. Because right here I see these guys have a common factor of x. So that leaves us with x squared minus x minus 30. In this denominator there's a common factor of 8. And I'm left with x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now over here, this division to become multiplication means I have to put this factorization in the denominator. So this numerator has a common factor of x squared, so it's going to go down here. And I factor that out, I have x squared minus 9x plus 18. And then this guy is going to factor and go in the numerator. He has a common factor of 4, so you factor that out, you have x squared minus 7x plus 12. So in this first step, I've just turned the division into multiplication, and now I've got the reciprocal going on here. And while I was getting the reciprocal, I decided to go ahead and take out the GCF at the same time. Now it's just a matter of finishing the factorizations. So here, x squared minus x minus 30, watch your signs, factors as x minus, five, x minus 6 times x plus 5. Common factor of 8 is still there, and this polynomial factors is x minus 4 times x plus 1. Then on the other side here, your GCF of 4, and x squared minus 7x plus 12 factors as x minus 3 times x minus 4. There's my x squared, and then this guy right here. Multiply to get 18, add to get 9. So that's a minus 3 and a minus 6. So now that we have everything factored completely, we just cancel the common factors. So we have common factors here of x minus 3. It's a common factor of x minus 4 here and here. The x minus 6 is also in common. 
Now there is some more factoring that can be done with these GCFs that are out in front, but I'm going to go ahead and combine this for you just so you can see what's going on. X times X plus 5 times 4, those single term uh, factors are going to put out in front, so 4X times X plus 5 over 8 times X squared times X plus 1. Now with the larger factors, these linear factors, x plus 5 and x plus 1, you can't go any further with that. But 4x and 8x squared, you can reduce that. 4 and 8 reduced to give you 1 and 2. x and x squared, that's going to reduce to give you x here and just 1x there. So in our final answer, we have the following. Well, that was just a 1, and that's a 1, so this is just x plus 5 all over. This is 2x and x plus 1. So leave this factor. Don't try to multiply that back in. Just keep it factored like that. So this one had a lot of stuff going, going for it. You had to turn the division to multiplication, take out common factors, and then finish factoring these guys. And even then, these common factors could still be reduced if, you know, they also say they do, do have common factors. All right, so that's multiplication and division. And let's look at some addition and subtraction. Remember that if you're going to add and subtract fractions, you have to have common denominators. Well, lucky for us here, these guys already have the same denominator. So I know that everything is going to be over x squared plus 4x minus 12. The trick in this problem is making sure you pay attention to your signs. This minus sign is going to have to distribute to both of those guys up there. So this first fraction, x squared plus 11x, is still there. But when I multiply times the negative, I get a negative x, and I get a positive 24. You have to pay very close attention to your signs. They will make the difference between getting it right and getting it wrong. So when I combine like terms in the numerator, I get x squared plus 10x plus 24. Now, some of you may be saying, well, I, I didn't distribute the negative, and I got a minus 24, and it still factors. Well, that may be true. It doesn't factor the way that it's supposed to factor. Uh, the signs, signs are so important. When you lose track of that, you lose track of everything. So here in this numerator, this guy factors as x plus 4 times x plus 6. And the denominator factors as x plus 6 times x minus 2. And you see here that you have a common factor of x plus 6 that reduces away. So we are left with the factor of x plus 4 in the numerator and x minus 2 in the denominator. And that's, that's all we can do. Again, don't try to reduce these because if I just had this fraction here, 4 over 2, yes, those could reduce. But I don't. There's not a common factor with the numerator and the denominator. So if we look at number 4 now, number 4 does not have common, uh, we do not have common denominators here, but we can easily get that. In order to do that, we have to factor these denominators. So you see here, this guy factors as x plus 3 times x plus 5. And this factors as x plus 3 times x plus 1. When you look, you'll see that they already have the x plus 3 in common. This guy over here is missing the x plus 5, so I can put in the missing factor here. But I also have to put that in the numerator. Because what you're doing with the stuff you see here in red, x plus 5 over x plus 5 is a form of 1. It always equals 1 unless x were to equal the restricted value of negative 5. Likewise, over here, this guy's missing the common factor of x plus 1. So now, everybody has the same three factors for that common denominator. Now, the order of these factors doesn't really matter. 
because these guys are just factors. They're all connected through multiplication. I, I Sometimes I put mine in order like this, 1, 3, and 5. That way I, I know that I'm getting everybody there. In the numerator, you have to multiply this stuff out. Just like in the last problem, there was a negative to distribute. So here I get 2x plus 2. And then here, when I distribute, I get 5x plus 25. So we combine those like terms, and we end up with 7x plus 27 over that common factor, that common denominator, excuse me, of x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x plus 5. Now when you get to this point, you need to see if this guy factors, because he may have a common factor with this denominator. Uh, unfortunately, 7x plus 27 is prime. There's nothing else we can do. So, just put a box around it and you're done.